Hey guys, Pagai Rules here, and recently everyone's been putting Rose Quartz on trial, trying to judge to see if she's still a good person after the recent huge reveal. And while I personally don't think we really have enough information to even judge if she is mostly a good person or mostly a bad person, Rose is definitely meant to be a complex character. But that's not really what this video is about. No, while everyone's focusing on this, I want to put another character on trial. I want to look back at some episodes that I never really got a chance to talk about. And now, after some time has passed, talk about what I really don't like about the whole Connie running away from Steven arc. In this video, I'm going to try to determine whether Connie was justified or not justified in her feelings towards the situation, and talk a little bit about why I think this storyline is pretty much the worst in Steven Universe. So before I get into anything else, the very first question I need to answer is, is Connie justified in feeling hurt? And surprisingly, the answer to that is actually Yes, I think she does have a good reason to feel hurt over the situation. If we look back to earlier episodes to see where Connie's character started out on the show, you'll see that her character represented the typical non-powered friend to Steven's magical hero. She starts out questioning if she has a role to play in Steven's journey, stating that she feels like she doesn't belong when Lion takes them to Rose's armory in Lion 2. This is furthered in Fusion Cuisine, where she feels like her parents wouldn't approve of her being in Steven's life, but between the events of those two episodes and alone together, Connie embraces is the fact that she can be a worthy asset and partner to him, fighting for a place in his world in full disclosure, going all out with training to be a powerful sword fighter in Sworn to the Sword, standing up to her mother and proving herself as a capable sword fighter in Nightmare Hospital, and finally, being able to be the only reason Steven even has a chance against Jasper in Crack the Whip. So thematically, and from a character development standpoint, Connie being upset over Steven rejecting her offer to stay and fight and leaving her behind to give himself up makes total sense. He convinced her she was worth being a part of his world, she trained rigorously, the two actually beat Jasper Estivani, and then, when she wanted him to stand and fight with her, he basically pushed her away. At the same time, though, I don't think Steven did the wrong thing. I mean, if even Alexandrite couldn't stop Aquamarine, then what chance would Stevani have? Adding to that, Steven felt personal guilt about his friends being taken, having told Peridot their names specifically, and just the fact that his existence in Beach City is serving as a magnet for these dangerous gems. Steven made a a rash decision that he thought was best in the heat of the moment, and while sure, it might not have been the very best decision, it still resulted in very little fallout compared to other options, and for a decision made on the fly, ended up working out really well. I think that though Connie's feelings are justified, she needs to realize that war is not a game. This is not the same as Steven not picking her to play on his baseball team. Similarly, Steven needs to grasp that not everything is his fault, and sometimes there are no peaceful solutions. All in all, it's a pretty gray situation that both of them are right about to some extent, and both have things they need to learn from it. And whether or not Connie was right or wrong doesn't really matter so much as her feelings were hurt and she feels like Steven betrayed their partnership. So with all that said, this conflict sounds like the makings of a deeply interesting debate that should make for a great episode or handful of episodes. So now let's take a look at how it went so, so very wrong. So one of the biggest points here is the timing of this conflict, where it falls in the series, and what it essentially replaces. To give a little context, Steven got taken to space by himself, as in without the crystal gems, for the first time ever. Sure, he's been taken there a few times before, but this was the first time he was completely on his own, aside from Donut Boy. Steven was in the most danger there than he was at any point in the series, with the Robonoids, the Diamonds, and the question of how to get home all serving as major obstacles. We also learn some very interesting things over the course of Steven's adventure. Rose may not have shattered Pink Diamond, a Pearl definitely knows something about that, the off-colors exist, Steven can freaking bring people back to life, and he can now travel back to Homeworld through Lion and Lars. I mean, there was a lot that happened. He actually got to speak to two Diamonds, and his close friend Lars freaking died. Stuff happened that you think Steven might want to, oh, I don't know, talk about? And yet. According to Gemcation, Steven does not talk about the stuff with the gems. It's not even like I'm saying that they just didn't show the episode where Steven tells the gems about his adventure. No, Gemcation proves that before that he does not mention anything, and all we the audience know is that Steven brings up the off colors at least to Garnet, as of your mother and mine, and eventually, in a single pale rose, Steven brings up the information about Pink Diamond being shattered to Pearl. Those are the only details we know the gems actually know at this point, 
point about a dozen episodes down the line here. How much did Steven tell them? What is Pearl's feeling on the fact that technically she could go back to visit Homeworld if Connie didn't conveniently take Lion? Does she have any conflicted feelings about this? Does she maybe want to go? Is she fighting against that urge? Who knows? With this huge gap in a major piece of the story here, it's no wonder why having multiple episodes dedicated to a pretty small conflict of Steven having a fallout with Connie right after Lars's head rubbed people the wrong way. Oh, and of course, because Connie took Lion, we have a convenient excuse to have Steven not visit Lars. Meaning from a story perspective, Lars, a character who is fresh off of character development, making a lot more people like and care about him, is now just theoretically dead in space because Steven isn't there to help him. And Steven doesn't really seem that concerned about it. We know he's not visiting Lars off screen because Connie has Lion, and we also know that the events of this storyline take place over multiple weeks. Do you just not care, Steven? Did you forget? Yes, a lot of the audience saw the preview of Lars of the Stars that was shown way before it aired. So we know that Lars is not only safe, but thriving out in space. But Steven doesn't know that, and anyone just watching the show and not paying attention to all the promo material and stuff coming out about it would understandably be frustrated at how little Steven cares about Lars and would make them really want to know what is going on back on Homeworld. So we don't get any follow-up with Lars, we don't get any any time of Steven reflecting on what happened in his adventure, we don't get to see the gem's reaction to Steven's adventure, or Steven grapple with the knowledge that now he can bring people back to life. No, no, instead of any of that, as soon as Steven gets home at the very beginning of this episode, we get Connie being mad, followed by her storming off, and then the rest of the episode is about the story of Mayor Dewey running for mayor, and only a little bit of time is dedicated to actually dealing with the fact that Lars is lost in space. Look, at this point, it's expected to have some more calm Beach City episodes after such a huge adventure, and that's not even necessarily a bad thing. But I think we really should have gotten at least one episode, even just one episode, to give this arc some closure and contextualization. But no, we rush into Connie drama mixed with an episode about one of the least likable townies. The closest thing we get is Gemcation, which is a bait and switch all on its own, and a single pale rose, which happens a dozen episodes after the Steven on Homeworld story. Line. So let's actually talk about Gemcation. It is a huge tease. It's set up as if it's going to be this episode where Steven reflects back on things and shares new information with the gems, but instead, Gemcation insists that Connie drama is deemed way more important than anything that Steven experienced out in space. I'm sorry, but as an audience member, I know the two of these characters are going to make up and this whole arc will essentially be pointless. And I know to Steven that losing Connie is big news, but like, the timing of this arc seems like it was just made to distract Steven from asking any big questions to Pearl to further kick the reveal down the line. A single pale rose would have had so much more impact had it come a lot sooner after Steven went to space. And for what? What do we get out of Gemcation? A story where we just see Steven brood about Connie not answering him? It just isn't that interesting. I understand that a part of the point of this storyline is to just show how friends can fall apart and sometimes it's realistic that your friend isn't going to respond in the way you want them to. Sometimes you're left without the ability to communicate with them. But this is the sort of thing that could have been told in one episode and not right after the big storyline. It's a real shame too because Gemcation is the first episode since I Am My Mom to really actually feature any of the gems. And after a huge adventure away from the gems and his dad where he has no idea if he'll ever see them again, when he finally gets an episode with them to see him just huddled over his phone instead of actually interacting with them, it's just sad. Connie is important, yes, but you also have these other very important people who were very concerned for you and decided to not actually run away from you that you should appreciate and want to spend time with a lot more than just moping over Connie. And in the end, Gemcation didn't even do anything to actually further the story. Since Connie never replies and she isn't there and we don't get to see her perspective, it's just an episode about Steven learning to accept the fact that Connie doesn't want to talk to him. Which isn't a bad moral in and of itself, it's just, again, the timing of this happening when it does and what it's taking away focus from, it just feels like a very out of place moral and episode type to fit right where it does. And it also kind of retreads some of the same ideas that were already 
explored in Cry for Help and Friendship and Full Disclosure. So with all that said, yeah, even if the story between Connie and Steven was handled well, I do feel like it's just a wrong place for this story to happen. If we had a few episodes of Steven adjusting being back on Beach City before this falling out happened, then I think the story would feel a lot better. So now let's get on to another big problem with the story, one that I did lightly touch on already. And it's that despite this conflict revolving around Connie, she doesn't actually get to do anything. Early in Dewey wins, she just takes Lion and leaves after a few lines to Steven about how upset she is. In fact, Dewey wins and Kevin party are the only two episodes that actually do anything plot-wise. The rest of them either focus on Steven being mopey about Connie, or just include a very brief reference to Steven missing Connie, or in the case of Paradox episodes, they're just thematically relevant to what Steven's going through. But what this all means is that the conflict doesn't have a chance to change or grow in that time. Any development that Connie has has to happen off screen. It means that the actual interesting reasons why Connie is upset and this whole debate over should someone ever sacrifice themselves and when is someone giving up on a partnership and when should you stand and fight and when should you run, etc, 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 are never actually explored and instead the conflict is about the fact that Connie is upset and not actually about what she's upset over. I mean you could change some of the dialogue in Dewey wins so that Connie just says Steven I don't like you because of the color of your shirt and pretty much nothing about this conflict actually changes aside from the ending of Dewey wins I guess. And a story about two characters falling out that doesn't even explore the reason that they're falling out just feels like angst for the sake of angst. Like the exact thing the show already made fun of with Ronaldo in full disclosure. It's not fun to see the characters that are ordinarily this peppy and this friendly with each other act upset at each other in this way, especially with how arbitrary and forced the split seems. And yeah, the other part of this is because the entire show has to take place through Steven's eyes and ears specifically, anytime we have these stories where a character runs away from Steven, we do not get to see them unless Steven has some sort of weird dream or body swap episode with them. And that really muddies the waters when you have a conflict where both sides have a point. It simultaneously makes it look like Steven is just meant to be in the wrong and is the only one that should be learning a lesson from this. But at the same time, because we don't see Connie, even if she has some really good reasoning and she's going through a lot and maybe she did really try to contact Steven a number of times, but through wacky misunderstandings, it didn't happen. Because we don't see any of that, we only hear it from her in one line in Kevin party. It makes it a lot harder to sympathize with her and her feelings because she never never really talks to Steven about it and instead just runs away, neither we or Steven really know what she's going through or feeling and it's frustrating. And maybe that's the point. Maybe the point of these episodes is to show how frustrating it is when someone that you really care about just runs away from you. After all, that is what Connie is upset about in the first place, but the way it's handled is just frustrating and the way it's concluded is just not satisfying. And plus, Steven had a very good reason for quote unquote running away from from Connie, whereas Connie's reasoning here is just, I'm upset and don't feel like talking to you, Steven. I want to make one thing very clear too. Just because I think Connie is justified in being upset does not mean I think she's justified in taking Lion and leaving Steven for weeks on end. Sure, Connie had no way of knowing that Lion was a portal back to Lars, but maybe if she'd stuck around for more than like three minutes to actually hear what Steven has to say, she would have known how important Lion is in all of this. Because the only way for any of it to work is Connie has to be huffy and leave in a rush. Even if she is hurt by all of this, clearly she is happy to see Steven return safely, and maybe if she had stuck around to understand some of his point of view, she could have been more understanding herself or even learned to put aside her feelings because there's something much bigger going on here. And it is a couple of weeks. Steven says he hasn't seen her in weeks in Kevin Party. I understand her wanting a little space from Steven, despite the fact that, well, she already got space when he went to space, her, 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 but literally weeks seem way too extreme. And okay, I know what you're thinking. Connie does have a line that says that she tried to see Steven in this time. In fact, I'll just lay out her exact quote here so there's no misunderstanding. Mind you, this is her only line in Kevin Party that even attempts to explain her actions, and this is the only line she has directly before reconciling with Steven. She says, Steven, I wasn't trying to ignore you. I was going to text you back. I, I wrote, I can't talk to you right now. But then I realized if I sent it, that would be talking to 
you. And it didn't make any sense. I wasn't making any sense. If we were going to talk, I thought it's gotta be in person. So I rode Lion to your house, but there was a note that said, gone vacationing. And then I ran into Kevin and he said, you'd be here, but uh, maybe this is still too soon. I, I don't even know what to say to you. I'm angry, I miss you. I feel like I'm out of my mind. So according to Connie, and this has to be true because she wouldn't have known about the sign that said gone vacationing unless she specifically went, she did try to see Steven and her reason for not replying to him was because she wanted to actually talk to him. I mean, it's kind of hard to talk about this because the character herself mentions that her logic on this was just, well, quite frankly, not there. But I do find this to be very, very weak. So she went to Steven's house once in this whole time, she couldn't have sent him a text just saying, I don't really want to talk right now, or asking him if they can talk in person, or even just leaving a note on his door saying, Steven, I tried to see you, I really need to talk to you in person, I don't want to do it over the phone. She couldn't have done, like, anything else? From a writing standpoint, it looks like this line was just thrown in so that we don't think that Connie is just, like, that cold and heartless that she would leave Steven hanging for, like, a month without any contact. It just feels tacked on. And while it might be realistic to have a character who says they don't really know what they were thinking and they realize how insane all of this sounds, that's not really an excuse for the story being as sloppy as it is. Either Connie didn't try to talk to Steven in that time or she did. Having this like weird wacky misunderstanding makes it sound like they're trying to soften how awful this conflict really is, but not very successfully in my opinion. Like after all of those weeks of not talking to Steven and thinking about what you want to say, this is the best thing you can come up with Connie, and this transitions us nicely into my last last point. This storyline did not matter. Steven and Connie reconcile after Connie says that line and Steven apologizes. Basically after shenanigans at Kevin's party that involve Kevin teaching Steven to basically give her the cold shoulder, Connie gets the line I mentioned earlier. Steven gets one line where he apologizes too and says that Connie isn't crazy, apparently. And then the two are just suddenly best buds again. Which, like I mentioned, implies what they're actually fighting about really didn't matter at all if they can just become friends without ever thinking about it, talking about it, or really even reaching any sort of conclusion other than just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry too. But them reuniting also means that the quote unquote realism of this story is completely thrown out the window. If you're going to try to play the realism card in terms of, well, sometimes friends do just kind of go away for a while and you're not always able to talk with them or really help them along or reunite with them and you just got to give it time. Yeah, it just all gets thrown out in the trash because this is not how a reunion goes. You don't just say one line of apology, they say one line of apology, and then automatically you're best friends again. Sure, some Sometimes all it takes is an apology, but when you have a big ideological difference in terms of Steven thinking he could sacrifice himself, Connie thinking they should always be partners in everything, it takes a little bit more than one line from each party to really fix that issue. Otherwise, you're just patching it, and then the next time something like this happens, you're basically back at square one. You didn't address why either party was really upset. You both just apologized. And I'm not even really upset about them being friends again after these quick apologies. It's more so the fact that in the very next episode, Lars of the Stars, they are forming Stevani for fun. Look, I don't know about you guys, but anytime that I've reconciled with a friend or someone that I've been away from for a few weeks or months or years, you don't go back to automatically treating them like a really close friend again. You might make up, but there is still some lingering tension and lingering upset feelings going on there that might have to be addressed or might just take some time to get you back to that close relationship. If they had had one episode after this, basically dealing with the epilogue of their struggle, showing how they're not 100% over things yet, then yes, I could say that this is realistic and this arc was handled with levels of subtlety. But it's not there. They're just automatically best friends again, which just makes me question, what is the point of this storyline? If it has no effect on anything else and it wasn't actually about the conflict, then that just makes me feel like it was angst for the sake of angst, which is obnoxious. Now, it is entirely possible that this storyline could come into play at some point later down the road. We we are very close to episodes where, spoilers, Ruby and Sapphire are about to have a falling out of their own. It's possible that this fallout gave Steven some tools that he's going to need to help him deal with Ruby and Sapphire's conflict. But 
A, I kind of doubt that, to be honest, because it really doesn't seem like Steven learned too much from this whole story. And B, even if he does, it's not like the show hasn't really dealt with these falling outs before. Even if he references something that happened in this storyline, I just really don't feel like it was that necessary, and I don't feel like it was handled well. So yeah, that was my big rant. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of the Steven and Connie falling out arc. And with that, Pie Guy rules out.